Hello everyone. Today in this video, we are going to see a previous year university question from module 5 that is direct stiffness method. So this is the question. It is from December 2019. In this question, it is asked to analyze and draw bending moment diagram for the frame shown in the figure using direct stiffness method. So let us see how to do this. So there are 13 steps in order to find out the final force acting on the structure by using direct stiffness method. The first step is to calculate kinematic indeterminacy of the frame structure. Then we will assign the system coordinate and element coordinates. From these system and element coordinate, after that we will divide this entire frame into small small elements and find out displacement transformation matrix. Then from that we will calculate the element stiffness matrix and develop a structural stiffness matrix for each element of the frame structure. And from the structural stiffness matrix of each element we will form or develop a global stiffness matrix. After that we have to calculate fixed end moments and equivalent join loads and develop the force matrix. From this force matrix and the global stiffness matrix, we can calculate the displacement by using equation displacement is equal to inverse of global stiffness matrix into force matrix. Then we will find out the element displacement matrix uh, by finding out or developing a displacement transformation matrix for the entire structure into displacement matrix. The finally, we will calculate the element forces by using equation k is equal to k star into small q. And finally, we will find out the final force just by adding up the element forces and fixed end moments. So, let us see through this example from this how can we find out the final force for this given structure. So, the structure was a frame structure. So, in order to calculate the kinematic indeterminacy, we have the equation dk is equal to 3j minus m plus c. So, here j means number of joints. Here we have 1, 2, 3 and 4 joints and 3 members 1, 2 and 3 and constraints. Number of constraints means it is a constraint of a supports. So, here we have two fixed support. Each fixed support will have a constraint 3. Okay. So, just applying this value in this equation, dk is equal to 3j minus m plus c, we will get the degree of kinematic indeterminacy is 3. And in our question, we have one load here and another UDL over here. Even though this frame have columns of same length and symmetric, but the loading in this frame structure is not symmetric. Therefore, we can say this is a sway frame. So, for a sway frame, we have to consider all the kinematic indeterminacies or, or we can say we have to consider all the three indeterminacies. Okay. So, we have to assign the system coordinate just as the number of degree of kinematic indeterminacy. So, we are assigning R1, R2 and R3. So, we have three system coordinates. Now, we will assign element coordinates 1 star, 2 star, 3 star, 4 star and 5 star, 6 star. The next step is to find or develop displacement transformation matrix for each element. So, here in this structure, I am going to divide the entire frame into three members or three elements. They are A, B, B, C and C, D. So, we have three elements A, B, B, C and C, D. Now, let us see the displacement transformation matrix for each element. First, let me take first element A, B. So, for A, B, we have only two system coordinates are acting on A, B or two system coordinates are affecting A, B they are R1 and R2. So, only R1 and R2 is acting or affecting AB. So, we can say for value R1, R2, 
the element coordinates of AB are 1 star and 2 star. So the values corresponding to these elements or these coordinates are minus 1 by length. The total length of AB is 6 meters. So minus 1 by 6 and minus 1 by 6 due to R1. And uh, sorry, this one is here. R1 and R2 and 1 star, 2 star. And when you apply a unit moment at uh, R2, at 1 star there is no moment so it will be 0 and at 2 star we have unit moment so the value is 1. Okay, So that's how we develop force displacement transformation matrix form displacement transformation matrix for element AB. Similarly for BC, for BC structure uh, when you look at the BC structure you can see that only two system coordinates are affecting. They are R2 and R3. Okay. So, R2 and R3 are affecting at their element coordinate 3 star and 4 star. So, when I apply unit moment that R2 is equal to 1, at 3 star it will be 1 and 4 star it will be 0. And when we give R3 equal to 1, at 3 star it will be 0 and 4 star it will be 1. So, the, the displacement transformation matrix of BC is 1, 0, 0 and 1. Now, displacement transformation matrix of CD. When you look at CD, you can see this horizontal force will also affect CD. Okay. So, when a sway occur, horizontal force given in this direction will affect the vertical member a vertical column CD. Therefore, we can say the system coordinates there that are affecting CD are R1 and R3. And for 5 star and 6 stars, value will be minus 1 by L and minus 1 by L, which is minus 1 by 6 and minus 1 by 6. And for R3, which is a moment, it will be 1 and 0. Okay, so this is how we develop displacement transformation matrix for each element. Now, next step is to form element stiffness matrix for each element. So, we have element A, B, B, C and C, D. And element stiffness matrix for each element A, B, B, C and C, D. A, B is E, I by L into 4, 2, 2, 4. Here length is 6 meters. So, I am taking this L inside this matrix. So, it will become EI into 4 by 6, 2 by 6, 2 by 6 and 4 by 6. Similarly, for K star BC, it is uh, same as AB that is EI by L 4, 2, 2, 4. So, the answer is also same because the length of AB, BC and CD are all are same. Therefore, the element stiffness matrix for each element A, B, B, C, C, D are similar. Now, we have to develop or we have to couple up all these element stiffness matrix into single matrix. So, this is the element stiffness matrix of the entire structure. This is for this one for A, B, this one for B, C and this one for C, D. Okay. Next, we have to develop structural stiffness matrix by using equation K is equal to A transpose K star into A. So, for each element, we have to develop structural stiffness matrix. For AB, we have to take A of AB. And this here, it will be A transpose of AB and here K star of AB. So, when you multiply, structural stiffness matrix for element AB will be 0 0.056 minus 0 0.167 minus 0 0.167 and 0 0.667. Similarly, for BC, A uh, displacement transformation matrix for BC into K star BC into A transpose of BC. So, when you multiply this, these both are unit matrix. So, the answer is EI into 4 by 6, 2 by 6, 2 by 6 and 4 by 6. And for CD also, we will do the same. So, A transpose, so this, this one is, oh, this one is A and this one is A transpose, okay. So, we 
get the answers as this is. So now we have to develop the global stiffness matrix. Global stiffness matrix can be obtained by changing these element coordinates into global coordinates. So here we have, we can say the element coordinates that present in AB were R1 and R2. Okay. So we have to introduce R3 again, R1 and R2. So we have to introduce R3, which is the third, third system coordinate. So we will be providing in the third place. Okay. So R1, R2, and we will, we have to introduce a third column and third row with values zero. Okay. So we have a global matrix with all the values R1, R2 and R3 or the values corresponding to all stiff system coordinates. Similarly, for BC, we know for BC, R2 and R3 were there. R1 was missing. So, we are introducing R1 with value 0. So, we will introduce R1 at the first place. So, we have to introduce a R1 horizontally and vertically. So, first column and first row is introduced with value 0. Similarly, for B, C, D, it was R1 and R3 was there, but R2 was not there. R2 was not affecting C, D. So, now we have to introduce a second column and second row with values 0. Okay. So, second column, second row was introduced. Now, we got all those Element stiffness matrix in terms of global coordinates. Now we just add all these three matrices and we will get the global stiffness matrix of the structure. That is just adding up all these element uh, global stiffness matrix of each element. So you will get the global stiffness matrix for the structure. Okay, just add up all these three matrices. Now the eighth step we have to find out fixed and moments and equivalent join loads. So we know equivalent join loads are just sign opposite sign of fixed and moments, and we, we know how to calculate fixed and moments. In A B, you can see at one star and two star, no no loads are acting in between A and B. Therefore, the fixed and moment at A B B C B A are zero zero, and for C D at C D. It is, sorry, BC, a vertical UDL load is acting. So, we can say the fixed end moment is minus WL square by 12 and here plus WL square by 12. And what we are doing here is we are just converting this UDL or whatever loads which are acting other than the nodal points or the junctions. We are making that loads into the loads corresponding to the junctions or we can say if what if if the loads these loads are distributed to nodal points or joints alone the their components will be minus w l square by 12 and here it will be plus w l square by 12 so when you uh, multiply this minus 20 into l is 6 so 6 square by 12 will give you minus 60 and it will be plus 60 and for cd there is no load acting in between C and D. Therefore, the values are 0 and 0. So, these are corresponding to 1 star, 2 star, 3 star, 4 star, 5 star and 6 star. Okay. Now, equivalent join load matrix is just sign change. We will change the sign of FEM. We will get the equivalent join load matrix. Okay. Now, the ninth step is to develop force matrix. So, force matrix is nothing but the force corresponding to the system coordinates. So, in the previous step, we have found that at 2 star and 3 star, the load acting are 60 and minus 60. And we have at 1 star, the place of 1 star, we have already 20 kN, which is given in the question. So, we are just making into a matrix format. So, the force matrix is at the R1 it is 20, at R2 it is 60, at R3 it is minus 60. Okay, so this is how we develop force matrix.
Now moving to the displacement matrix. So for displacement matrix, we have to find out the inverse of global stiffness matrix. We will find the inverse and multiply with force matrix. It will give you the displacement matrix. Okay. And the 11th step, we have to find out element displacements. So for that element displacement, we should know what is A dash matrix. A dash matrix is displacement matrix for entire frame. We have found out displacement matrix for each element. Here A dash indicate displacement matrix for the total frame. So they are here when you apply R1, R2, R3, the values corresponding to 1 star, 2 star, 3 star, 4 star, 5 star and 6 star. So when you apply R1, it is minus 1 by 6 here, minus 1 by 6 here. At uh, 3 star and 4 star, it will be 0. And it will also affect CD and same minus 1 by 6 and minus 1 by 6. 6 indicates the length of the column. Okay. And for R2, when you apply R2 is equal to 1, then uh, only 2 star and 3 star will have values 1. All other values will be 0. And when R3 is given 1, 4 star and 5 star will have value 1 and all other element coordinates will have value 0. So this is how we develop displacement matrix for entire frame structure. Now we will find out the displacement of each element by multiplying this displacement transformation matrix with the, our delta or displacement matrix. Okay. So element displacement is displacement matrix into displacement transformation matrix now in the second last step we will find out the element forces so element forces q is equal to k star into small q where k star is the element stiffness matrix for entire structure into element displacement so we have 1 by ei multiplying this with and uh, this small k star with small q, you will get the value minus 14, 14 by 14.5, 45.5, point five, 5.6, minus 65.4 and minus 54. I just uh, rounded off, rounded it into a single decimal point. So the values are thus. Okay. Now the last step is to find out the final forces. So we are just Sorry, uh, in this step, we don't have 1 by EI because all the 1 by EI will get cancel each other. Here EI and 1 by EI will get cancel each other. So, the values is minus 14, 14.5, 45.5, 5.6, minus 65.4 and minus 54. Now, the final force Q is equal to Q plus FEM. So, we have the Q and FEM. We just add it up and you will get the final force acting on the frame as minus 14, 14.5, minus 14.5, 65.6, minus 65.4 and minus 54. So this is the answer for this question. Now you can draw the bending moment using these values. Okay.